Hey, what's up, y'all? Matt here with Hatch in another episode of Built By. You're really going to like today's episode. Um, I was ecstatic to get Chuck Toki on the podcast, who is, you probably already know him. He probably needs no introduction. He is the premier sales consultant in the space. Everything he touches turns to gold, it feels like, uh, because he has a different mentality and a different way of treating things. And we're going to dive into all this stuff. And my favorite thing is that he's actually going to provide like a mini consulting session and he gives some insight into you know, two tactics that your sales team can employ today to start closing more leads, more appointments, and ultimately drive more revenue. So we're going to dive into all that stuff. But first, I just want to say thank you so much for you know tuning in every week. Um, at this point, we're up over 200 plays a month, which is insane to me. I never would have expected it to have taken off like this. And the big thing is I, I have to thank the guests that we've had on. I think that's been a big thing. And it's awesome to hear that you all are, are seeing enough value in this that you're willing to listen each week. And I know podcasts are a dime a dozen in the home improvement industry, but um, I'm going to keep at it and I'm going to keep trying to find the best guests that I can find and the best content to help you become a better professional because that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. The reason I feel like I can preface this episode with that is because like this is a bombshell of an episode. I mean, Chuck is is one of the most renowned speakers in the industry. He is home improvement sales. Like he knows what he's talking about. And if you're not familiar with him, uh, you're probably familiar with Bathfitter. You might be familiar with you know Able Roofing, uh, Mister Roofing. Uh, you might be familiar with American WeatherTechs. All of these companies, he went in and transformed their sales process. On top of that, his consultancy business success advisors is you know second to none when it comes to training sales reps. And just go read the reviews on like his public speaking gigs. Like people get pumped up by this guy because he knows what he's talking about. He's done it, and he's telling others how to do it, and he tells you how to do it on this podcast. So I'm going to shut up when it comes to talking about the episode and actually play it. But first, I just want to say thank you again. Um, if you have any feedback for future episodes, there's a phone number on the page that we post this, and uh, on the videos itself, shoot me a text with any topics that you would like to get covered. Um, I've had a few people send some things over. I'm still looking for the perfect person to talk about it because I don't want to get someone's second rate on here to give advice that I don't think is valuable for you. So but once I find the perfect person, I will have them on to cover that topic. I'm really excited about it. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick this episode off. This is Charles Toki, who is the vice president of sales at American WeatherTechs and renowned speaker and sales consultant at Business Success Advisors. I hope you enjoy. This is a podcast for home improvement and home services marketing. This is Built By. But you've got to be adaptable. You've got to find a way to accommodate an uncomfortable customer. If you're not getting the home advisor leads in the first five minutes, you shouldn't even do it. Hopefully we're eating their lunch while they're trying to get back up and running. You know, I I guess the the easiest way to explain who I am uh, is I was in aerospace, and I, I know that you saw that in my my background. Uh, so being in aerospace, and then deciding at that point once nine eleven happened, got thrown uh, kind of thrown to the wolves and into sales. Um, and uh, long story short, ended up inside the home improvement space, and uh, there at Bathfitter. Um, with bath fitter, you know, I was the youngest guy there and I was the sales manager, which was not an easy thing to do. Um, uh, but, uh, we made it through and we grew that business, uh, based on just good business practices. Um, knowing that, and I, I had a good mentor early on tell me that the day that I come in and, uh, start to evaluate my people was draft day, you know, I'm always going to be evaluated by my uh, worst performing sales rep. And uh, that always scared me, you know, whether I was there uh, growing that into, you know, uh, the, the machine that it is uh, and then uh, going into Able Roof and uh, Mr. Roof, you know, that always scared me knowing that I'm always being evaluated by my, my worst performing sales rep. Uh, yeah. So I'm always trimming the bottom and training the top. And so, you know, that in itself uh, got me to where I am today. A lot of mentors and people say, hey, Chuck, how can I do what you do? And you have to, you know, when they say, oh, it's an overnight success. I'm like, well, 
if you look at 15 years as overnight, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, and it, it took a lot of, of mentors and people that, um, you know, asking questions, making mistakes. I mean, I've made some pretty major mistakes uh, in the past and you learn from them. You're either going to learn from them or you're going to regret them. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, then once I left uh, Able, I decided at that point, when I had so many different companies calling me for the hour drive that I had home, uh, at that point I decided I was going to go in and I was going to start coaching, which uh, never looked back. I mean, it's it's been absolutely tremendous, um, yeah. and it's it's not when people look, oh, you're you're you know you're coaching. Uh, is it the money? Is it you know? Is it this? Is it that? And I says, you know, the biggest thing is when you get somebody that they tell you you've changed their life or you've changed their business. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, to, to make a living doing that, I literally, I'm living the dream when people, when people say they're living the dream, I'm living the dream. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. I, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile earlier and you had on there under your time as bath fitter. It's not about all your accomplishments. It's about a letter that one of your reps sent you like a, cu a couple of years after you had left. That was like, you know, you took a chance on me and it really changed my life and, and thank you. So so that's the impact that kind of drives you more so than, than the metrics and, and diving into all that stuff. You know, those success stories, the ones where uh, like the guy that I pulled out of a, uh, a car wash, I mean, he was in the Marines and now making a quarter million dollars a year. I mean, it, it's these wow. people because, you know, you, you look at it and say, because I decided to open my mouth and, and engage this person, uh, the way that their life turned out literally took a, a left at Albuquerque, as as uh, <laughs> would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You know, you know, getting back to the kind of what you were talking about in the beginning. You know that that you know that transition from aerospace engineering into sales management into the home improvement space, which not a lot of uh, sales managers take that route. But it's interesting because it's going to sound corny, but like you you re it's like you re-engineered the sales team. And the sales process at every step you've had, and, and now you're doing that with with businesses that you consult for. So, one thing I've seen in the industry is a lot of companies have this case of like, well, this is the way we've always done it, so we're going to always do it this way. Is that something that you run into when businesses come to you for for consulting, and and they just are hitting a wall? Most of the time, yes. You know, they they prescribe to the if it ain't broke, you know, you know, don't fix it, and the, the pit problem here and what I have learned over the years is if it's not broke, I'm going to break it. And that's the only way I can stay out front. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That means you're going to take your seat in the back of the bus. And so you always have to come up with new stuff. Um, you know, it's not just because I'm a, I'm a coach, but also because and I have my own team now here in uh, Cincinnati and Columbus. You know, mm -hmm. we have to do the same thing especially knowing that I speak and they're like, Chuck, you're just handing out everything that you teach us. You know, I'm always having to come up with new stuff uh, to, to keep them on top. You know, so, you know, that in itself is, you know, when you're looking at somebody says, oh, you know, we, we, we're doing this because we've always done it. It's because no one's come in and explained to them that, you know, as long as you continue to do the same thing, even though it works, you're only going to be as good as you are today. You're never going to get any better. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Your time in the industry, you've seen you've seen waves. You've seen you know some of the most successful companies kind of built over those years. And is that the is that the thing that sets them apart? Is they're always looking to break and transform their sales process? You know, you have these uh, these people in these organizations that are visionaries. People mm -hmm. that say, "Hey, we want to do this, but how do we do it?" You know, and I've had people look at me and say, "Hey, Chuck, you're a visionary," and the answer is, "I'm not." Uh, you know, to me, if you want to be different, we can make you different. But what the what where I come in is as implementing the process of making you different. You know, uh, when you look at uh, Able Roof, and uh, when someone says that, um, sorry, when someone states that, uh, you know, you did this, you did. It's like I didn't. You know, there's over 300 people there. You know, coming in with great ideas, and I just decided I like that one, I like that idea, and I'm going to implement. And so I'm more of a master implementer than I am a visionary. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, zooming in a little bit into, you know, some of that, that stuff that you're, you're teaching companies. And one theme I've seen a lot is that you, you don't talk about 
the numbers as much. You talk more about the percentages and, and it's a big thing that is a discussion I'm seeing a lot now, especially on the marketing side, which is, you know, uh, instead of driving leads, why aren't we driving qualified revenue and qualified pipeline and sales? It's why are we running appointments when we should be working on increasing that close rate of those appointments? We can run less, make more money there. Um, is that, you know, a close rate that you're primarily coaching, you know, companies on improving or uh, is it the appointments or, you know, where, Where's kind of your, your, when you step in and, and help them get better there? So when you're looking at close rate, um, I'm not a big proponent of looking at close rate. We look at close mm -hmm. rate because it's more recognizable, mm -hmm. but I'm going to look more at their slug or their NSLI than anything. When you okay. take your, your net sale per lead issued, it pretty much takes all the numbers that you really want, whether it's efficiency, profitability, you know, those types of things, and it all puts it into one number. Um, and depending on your marketing spend, um, you know, like our marketing, with our marketing spend, we have to be over 3,500 to say that we're doing very, very well. Uh, we need to be over 3,000 to say that we're profitable. So, mm -hmm. you know, we look at that as, as our gauge. But when someone says that, because there's very misleading terms inside of close. You know, right. there's a guy out there that says that he's the 91% closer. Well, if you look at the background, I mean, he should have been, you know, uh, when people, you know, when we interview people like, oh, I'm a 60, 70% closer. It's like, well, there's a lot of, of backstory that you're missing there. Uh, yeah. However, typically when you're looking at their NSLI, um, there's so much involved that I can typically take a look at their NSLI and say, okay, you're doing very, very well. I still want to know the backstory but now you've intrigued me. Yeah, so that NSLI, uh, for me that has no idea what that means and maybe a few listeners do too, is that, to explain that a little bit and you know maybe how they can calculate that. So NSLI is your net sale per lead issue. So you take all of your appointments mm -hmm. and, and uh, you, you take your total revenue divided by your total number of uh, appointments and that'll be your net sale per lead issue. Now here, let's just say we're, we're talking round numbers. Let's say you'd pay your, your salespeople 10% commission. Mm -hmm. So when someone uh, has a $3,000 NSLI, you can go to that sales rep. And that's why I like this because it goes back and forth. But you can go to that sales rep and let him know that, Hey, you, every time you reach for your door, that's $300 that you make just by reaching to your door to go to that appointment. You don't even have to sell that appointment, but knowing that your NSLI is at $3,000, you make 10% commission, you make $300 every time you go touch your door. You know, so you have sales yeah. reps running to their cars. So again, it, it helps the sales rep understand what they're supposed to do because it's all about with them, what's in it for me. So it helps them understand, but it also helps the manager and uh, and executives understand where they are. Gotcha. That's interesting. You know, you talked about you don't really focus on close rate that much or appointments. Are, are those the two main metrics you think sales teams are making uh, are that they're failing because they're using those is like kind of their their performance indicators of how well their team's doing? It's it's not the numbers where they fail. It's the interpretation of the number. Mm. You know, it's it's the reaction of the number itself. Uh, you know, somebody, when, uh, when you're looking like, oh, we need more leads, we need more leads. Uh, even I was told early on, it, it's, you don't need more leads. It's, you need to understand what to do with the leads you already have. Yeah. You know, whether it's, and this is where Hatch comes in. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, you know I, I should come and work for you guys because I've sold so many uh, uh, subscriptions to Hatch because <laughs> we love using the, the rehash portion of Hatch. You know, it's so easy. You know, it used to be that, you know, you have to talk about the product that fell off the back of the truck and, hey, we got to fill our trucks. So we're going to give you the discount. You know, that stuff is gone. Whether you're in, in uh, bath sales and trying to fill a truck, as they say, mm -hmm. or you're in, um, you know, you're, you're in uh, roofing sales and you're trying to reach your goal this month. You know, there's so many different ways of doing it, but using Hatch. Um, and and not to throw the shameless plug there, but <laughs> much to bring in that uh, that easy um, rehash. Yeah, we use hatch first, and then we use a phone call second. Is how we do our rehash. But um, when I say when we're going into this and, and we're talking about you know the closing rate, 
being a false number. It's not exactly false. I mean, it, when you look at, hey, if I'm going to send this guy out because he's he closes 60 percent, I mean, that is a real number. But where it falls short, and like I said, it, it's the interpretation of the number is what type of leads is he running? I mean, how good is this person when he runs and sells 60 percent? When, when uh, he sells 60 percent, but the lowest guy on the, the team is closing at 50 percent, you really got to look at what they're running. They're probably running a bunch of referrals. Yeah. You know? So well, that's interesting. In the shameless plug, I appreciate that. <laughs> the, the hatch plug, but you know, you said something interesting there was that you lead with hatch and then you follow up with a phone call. See, what we see a lot is a, a lot of companies really want to lead with phone call right at the beginning. That that's it goes back to those one of the we've done it this way all the time. If it's not broke, we're not going to fix it. But it seems like you have a different approach there, and it, I would love to hear you know how maybe leading with text versus phone calling is you know, changed your game as a. Right. Well, you know, so we're going to throw the softball first. So a day after the appointment, we're going to send a uh, hatch notification to mm -hmm. that uh, prospect asking them how the appointment went, you know, did they have any questions? And, and ultimately what happens many times is that comes back with, Hey, you know, we're ready for, uh, for the, for Tim to come back out. You know, that's our softball, you mm -hmm. know, that, easy rehash, just knowing that a sales rep will not follow up. And I love it when sales managers say, yeah, they're, they're in there doing their follow-ups. And I, it's like comedy to me. A sales <laughs> guy that does his follow-ups is a unicorn. <laughs> so, you know, when, when a company puts their leads, all the money that they've been spending the, I mean, our, our marketing budget, uh, Corey's probably gonna be mad at me saying this, but our marketing budget's almost a million dollars. I'm not putting a million dollars in sales reps hands. So, you know, you know, we are going to follow up with it with hatch first. And then after three days, then we start in with our rehash calls. Awesome. Yeah, that's it's it, we've seen it work. And, you know, the crazy thing is it takes like three touches before someone responds. That's that's what we're seeing across the board. And, you know, people tend to give up on the second touch on the first touch, let alone the second touch. And it's just all about that consistency, consistency and in, in getting in touch with them. So that's awesome to see that it's uh, helping you guys there. But um, Chuck, I want to zoom in a little bit. I, I was listening to a, a podcast you're on. Um, I forgot which one it might've been American contractors, but you were talking about a problem that a lot of companies have when it comes to hiring a sales manager and, you know, hiring a team. And it was kind of fascinating to me because I, I'm familiar with the Peter principle, which is, eventually people are going to get raises to their, to their own level of incompetence. But what you see is sales managers uh, that fail are typically those sales reps that were very successful. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, so, and we have to be careful using this because there are many, many, and I've worked with many uh, sales managers that were top reps. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the issue is when a, a an executive or an owner and he picks the, the guy that's doing the best because what he's thinking that if I promote him to sales manager, he's going to clone himself. Mm. Never happens. And it usually doesn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. you know, so you have to look at the intention of that person that wants that uh, sales management role. Most of the time, the intention of that person, whether it's the top rep or anybody, that you know, they let's say it's a, a rep that just wants to get off a ladder. You know, mm -hmm. that's not the reason to be a sales manager because you no longer want to climb a ladder. You know, it, it's not a good reason to be a sales manager because it just happens to be your time. You 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 paid your dues. Yeah. You know, and I'll tell you, most of the best sales managers. And I'm going to make some some enemies out there by saying this. Some of the best sales managers comes from outside of the organization. Mm. They don't have friends or family inside there uh, to you know you know he doesn't already have his boys, if you will. Yeah. You know, that everybody's like, oh, you know, you're getting all the good leads because uh, you know you and him were best friends to begin with. You know, we don't need any of that. We we have enough pressure on us to begin with. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And you know, they they tend to come in and shake things up like right from the get go. Yeah. It gets everybody on their toes at least, right? But on the on the flip side of this, I mean, you're going to take your racehorse and put him behind a desk. <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, you know, it's interesting for those reps that, that do want to take that next step, though, that have intent that they want to, you know, build a team and lead a team. 
you know, what's your advice to them to, to get better as a leader? They need to make their intention pure. You know, it has to be when I wanted to become a sales manager, which was way back when I was in mortgage, right before coming into the home improvement space, mm-hmm. I started helping some other people. I was, uh, I was listed as one of the, the top reps in the country for mortgage and, you know, getting the opportunity for just a couple people in the office to help them. And they were going to quit. They were going to go back to their nine to five. And even today, they're some of the top producers. But to take that, watch it, and to, to have that feeling, that did something to me. When I, I brought that to my wife and says, hey, I think I want to be a sales manager, the first thing she asked was, do I have to go back to work? Because she knew I was making twice what my sales manager was making. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, to me, you know, as a sales manager, you have to want to help people. It's not about your paycheck. You should get a good paycheck for what you do. But you have to understand that, you know, you have to be in it for them. You're, you're a servant to the people that you manage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it comes back to when we were talking earlier about like, that's what drives that motivation is, you know, picking somebody up literally off the street and, you know, seeing them succeed in that role. So I think that that's what the true intent is there. So that that's awesome, Chuck. Um, You know, now I want to dive into getting some actionable tips for for listeners out there uh i think it's fascinating like you go on linkedin and you share all of these insights about like i I watched one today it was like the the reversal it's all of these little sales tricks and you don't have to be like i always go back to golfing where i think about like bryson dechambeau like hitting it 400 yards he can't hit a fairway but it's the golfers that just do things the right way do the process that the sales manager puts in place that seem to succeed the most so um i would love to hear you know Going to that that LinkedIn video you had today, um, I believe it was called the reversal. Um, Tell me a little bit about that sales tactic. And I'm going to probably pick your brain on like two more if we have enough time here. (laughs) Uh, So reversing reversing came from a a company called Sandler Sales. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with reversing, what I like about reversing is understanding how to answer a customer's question. So if you're sitting in front of somebody and like the the example I used in that video there on Facebook was that uh, someone says, hey, can we get this installed by July 4th? Most and I'm going to say most uh, as like 99 percent of sales reps out there are going to see that, you know, they're they're sitting in that deer stand and they're going to take the shot right then and there. Mm -hmm. So they have to calm down and make sure that they understand the answer that they that they need to give and so most of them are going to say yeah absolutely we can get this installed by july 4th and the customer comes back says great i'm glad i've got two other people coming out so you know as soon as those two people leave i I mean we know you're the guy you know of course (laughs) it's always you know you're the guy uh you know and you have to understand how to answer this and it has to be with a question so if someone comes to you and says, hey, can I get this installed by a certain date, meaning, you know, let's say July 4th, I'm going to come back and say, I-, I don't know if we can do that, but let me ask you, what's what's happening on July 4th? I mean, are you having family over? And they're saying, yeah, we've got a lot of family coming over. We want, we really want to, the house to look really good. Uh, so, I mean, you want to, you want to show off that sexy roof, right? <laughs> and they're like, Yes. All right, so I'm going to make a phone call. Now we're really tight right now, and it's going to, if they even say yes, then we're going to have to move forward quickly. So are you ready to move forward if I get a, an approval on this? And I'm going to ask them, I'm asking for the order right now. Mm-hmm. And when they say yes, then I'm going to hold them to that. I'm going to hold them as a commitment to that. So I'm going to call uh, the, the office, make sure that, you know, I can, get, I don't even care if they say, can you have it installed by next year? I don't care what date it is. I'm going <laughs> to get approval. I'm going to get back with them and say, Hey, it's great news. And since you convinced me that if we could go ahead and, and uh, get that date that you'd want to move forward, let's go ahead. Let's get this thing taken care of. And you were looking at this color and this color, right? You know, again, you're going to fill out the contract, but that is reversing. You know, that's one of the easiest uh, times to do it. The same thing when someone, um, you know, they, they say, well, you know, right now is just not a good time. You know, we need to do this in the fall. Okay. When you say in the fall, you know, what's going to happen in the fall? Well, I'm supposed to get a bonus. Okay. So what you're telling me is if I was sitting in front of you in October, 
you know, we'd be doing business right now. So again, that's going at somebody rather than saying, you know, kicking your can and walking out like, man, I sure wish I'm, you know, I'm, I got to put him on my schedule for the fall. Yeah. yeah. So again, it's, it's reversing, you know, what the customer's giving you. Yeah. It's fascinating, man. I, I love that. I, I kind of geek out with these little, like these like sales tricks and sales hacks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, is there one in particular, since you've been doing this, that it kind of blows people's minds? Is there one that you've seen that like kind of helps sales organizations? It might've been that one, but um, another kind of sales trick that you think a lot of people aren't doing that they, they could be doing that would, you know, help their the process. Mean, the number one issue inside of sales is the, the same issue 20 years ago. And that's that sales reps aren't taking the time to learn, you know, uh, closing uh, uh, price presentations and, and rebuttals. They're still not learning it. You know, we have a, when we come in to work with an organization, we have a thing called a closing roadmap. And that closing roadmap gives them every possible uh, out from the customer and how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, uh, the company that we're in, I say, look, just give it to me. You know, this is stump the jump. Just give me anything that's come at you and you can't deal with it. You know, they say, oh, well, you know, you know, we, uh, we still need to get three estimates. You know, I'm going to concede first. I totally understand. Uh, the first thing, you, you, if you don't concede, it's nothing but an argument and nobody mm -hmm. wins an argument. You know, then you go into that uh, excuse or stall because it's not a it's not an objection until it's dealing it with money. So when we go through that closing roadmap, we help them understand that as, if they can take it to money, then they can close the deal. If they can't take it to money, then they're not engaging in a price presentation at that point. Mm. Fascinating. And you you put all this together and you just hammered home with your reps, just you know, one on ones, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even when my reps, I mean, uh, my reps will continue to work on it, work on it, work on it. We'll bring them. We'll bring them into the office. Uh, we'll walk by them in a whether it be a hallway, say, hey, Donald, man, real quick, man, that price that you just gave me, that was way more than I thought it would be. And we'll see if he's on his game or if he's, you know, Elmer Fudd, you know, but it, 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 you, know. <laughs> yeah. you got to catch it in the middle of like a bite of like a turkey sandwich or something. That'll really that's right. catch him off guard. <laughs> that's awesome, Chuck. Um, you know, thank you so much for coming on. Honestly, I have one last question. This is what I like to ask every guest after they've been on the show, which is the last tip before we dip. So what's the number one piece of advice you'd give to any home improvement professionals you know, right now when it comes to sales? When it comes to sales, um, I, a question I get a lot of time is how can I become the best? How can I become a top rep besides just working on my craft? And the, the answer to this is you need to go out and you need to find someone that you feel is the best. And to be the best, you got to get to know the best so that you can beat the best. And so, you know, anytime that I found somebody, whether it's in my organization or someone else's, I don't care if they're, you know, halfway across the United States, uh, that price of that plane ticket in the, in the a day or two uh, stay that you need to be there is well worth the time to go ride with the person learn from the person, whether you're an owner and want to, to talk to another owner, a sales rep and want to talk to another sales rep or a sales manager and want to talk to another sales manager, get out there. Don't mm -hmm. sit back. And, and I, you know, as much as many videos as I do and how much coaching I do, you can't just sit there and watch videos and YouTubes of us. You have to get out there and uh, get to know people that are making it happen every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get to know them, shake their hand and, and that it's, it's a different vibe. I mean, that's the, I feel like this industry really is all about a handshake and, you know, eye contact and actually meeting somebody. And it's the same thing when you're going to the home with a homeowner, they expect the same. So that's right. That's awesome, man. So that's all the questions I had, Chuck. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, I know you've got a big event coming up, but I'd, I'd love to hear some, you know, what you got going on and, uh, you know, get a quick plug for you for any listeners that are interested. I tell you what, we've got top rep coming up June 28th and 29th. It is the best closers in the industry will be there to compete. Now, even a lot of the newer reps are there and they're still going to be able to compete. And a lot of times it's the newer reps that come out ahead. Uh, they're the ones that don't have any baggage. So, you know, it's nice for them to come in and learn. Even if you think that you know it all, 
get there, watch these people. You're still going to pick up a lot. We're literally going to leave everything on the table. Uh, we're also going to have owner's breakouts where we talk about how the easiest way to rehash, how to work your lead aggregator, such as home advisor, uh, you know, Quinn street, those types of people, you know, mm -hmm. there's so much that's going to be taught. There's no selling there. We're not there to sell them anything. Uh, so get on to topreptraining.com. Get signed up right now. Ed, we only have six more days uh, to get people signed up before we close that down. Awesome, man. Sounds good. I'm going to drop the link in the, the comments and, and the uh, the description below. But Chuck, awesome. Thanks so much for coming on, man. This was extremely, val extremely valuable. And I just love talking, you know, sales and, and marketing with professionals in the industry. So I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you.